Hello staff, in this video I'm going to introduce and describe the fundamentals of using the PeopleSoft Query Viewer to search and run existing queries in the HR and student administration environment. Let's begin by logging into WaveNet and navigating to the Query Viewer. Under Staff Services, select HR and Student Administration. From the main menu, locate Reporting Tools, select Query, then select Query Viewer. The Query Viewer appears, allowing you to retrieve all queries for which you have access by use of the search by, and then allows you to run the selected query to various outputs. To find an existing query, the default is to search by query name, or by using the pull down, you may search for a query by some other choices. Some useful selections would be description, the owner of a query, a folder name, and it even allows you to search for a query that uses either a field name or a record name. So let's first search by query name since it's the default. Notice this basic search function uses a conditional operator begins with. This means the search text that's entered in the field must begin with the exact string of characters entered to net any results. At this point, you may not have a clue as to a query name or description or record or even a field name. Don't panic, just simply select the search button and view the results. With the search by field left blank, the results will display all the queries that you have access to, meaning only those tables that are included on your query security tree will be listed and available to run. But note, that still could be thousands of queries. Now, notice the message at the top of the search results. Too many items met your search criteria. Only the first 300 items displayed. Take note here that any PeopleSoft search result list of any kind will be limited to a maximum of 300. This could be queries, names, items, categories, etc. Just note that's not the case for a query result as query results could be thousands of data rows. More on that later. Also note it is always good to check the upper right corner of the HTML output as it will identify how many items in the query list is currently viewed with provision to view a greater or smaller number of items and it also allows you to scroll through all those items as it displays. Now let's see how to search for a query by its name with some text string entered. In the basic search we are limited to using just one conditional operator begins with. Consequently you must enter a string of characters that will match a query name that begins with those exact characters. So let's enter SPP. The results? No matching values were found. Note the characters entered are not case sensitive. Okay, now let's do this again with a special character, the percent symbol. This symbol is used as a wildcard and is used to match any string of zero or more characters. We'll enter SPP again with the percent symbol in front of the string. Notice we have 53 results and are viewing the first 30. Let's select View All and now you're viewing all queries with the string SPP somewhere in the query name. Take note in this environment all student admin queries should begin with the text string ZP. So now let's search only for queries that begin with ZP. Notice again only the first 300 queries are displayed. By selecting view 100 we can scroll through those 300 queries. However, that's not a very efficient method in locating the query you need. And besides here, we're only viewing the first 300 of a list of many hundreds or thousands. Notice in the list of those 300 some possible search strings. So let's use the wildcard. ZP, percent symbol, Seaver, and search for Seaver related queries. And again with the string SVR. Notice only the first 300 items displayed. Now let's fine-tune the search to ZP percent, SVR percent, GRAD. Note the results. So it's essential by entering a partial string of known characters 
with the use of the wildcard, it is fundamental to narrowing the search results and finding the right query. As you can see from the pull down, there are other ways to search for a query, such as by its description, as well as by owner or folder. We'll demonstrate this with the string school. By using search by query name, we get 18 results. And by using the description, we get 55 results. Also notice there is a folder view that appears upon any search which allows you to additionally filter the results based on a specific folder. Other search parameters include uses field name and uses record name. These search parameters require you to be familiar enough to input a partial field name string or record name string. Let's search for a record with the text string of credit in that record name. It also remember to use the wildcard for more inclusive results. So, for most of your search needs, using those techniques we just demonstrated, you will be able to quickly find the query you're looking for. But note that there is an alternative way to do a search that could help narrow your search results. By using the advanced search link, there are eight different search fields with multiple conditional logic operators. Click on that link to view an expanded method to search for a query. Notice that besides begins with, you have other ways to search for queries using various operators. But note that the two most common conditional search operators are name begins with the value specified or name contains the value specified. And note that using the contains operator is exactly equivalent to using the percent wildcard. An example where the advanced search may be useful could be where you need to search using multiple search by fields in order to narrow down the result list. Consequently, unless you need multiple search fields by using the percent wildcard in the basic search function, there may be little or no need to use the advanced search. Now that you know how to use the query viewer search by function, let's take a look at the options for running a query. By selecting run to HTML, the query results will output to another tab in the web browser. Please take note that depending upon the web browser and its settings, the pop-up blocker may be enabled. Thus, you may not see the results as the blocker has prevented the output. Consequently, you will need to change the settings or at least allow the blocker to open up a new tab in order to view the results. The Run to Excel will redirect the results to be downloaded as an Excel file. You may then open up Excel from the download library. And be mindful of the pop-up blocker with this option as well. Please take note of the output behavior between these two choices. By running to HTML, the output may be limited to viewing the first 100 rows of information. Notice here there are 144 results. However, by default, you will only view the first 100. Thus, you may select the View All link to see the results beyond the first 100 rows. However, in the Run to Excel selection, all data rows will be sent to the spreadsheet automatically. Additionally, you may send an output to XML or schedule an output with a Run Control ID. One last note. Any query that you use often may be added to your favorites list. Simply click on that link and it will immediately be added to your favorites view. And at any time you may clear all query favorites with the clear button or you may individually remove one or more queries with the minus icon at the far right. That's it. Thank you for watching.